let's dissect each of the various vendors out there. Snowflake, there's no on-premise offering. There is no built-in machine learning. You can't run inference directly on the data in the database. You have to bring in third-party tools. Where does Snowflake fit into the overall capabilities uh, spectrum, if you will, um, Holger and George? Well, Snowflake is, is interesting as a company, right? Because we know that the data warehouse was the big, mean data crunching machine to get answers in the past. And it was always never perfect because in a lucky case, when you had a chance, it took two, three days to update the data warehouse. And usually it would be two, three weeks. And if you did something major on facts and dimension table, it would be two, three months. So way too slow for today's economy, not even to mention the pandemic, right? But what Snowflake has shown, if you take an old architecture and you put it in the cloud, you benefit from the infinite computer builds of the cloud, right? You can run more things with cheap compute. You can expand things fast. And basically, Snowflake has shown that you can increase the, the speed of the old offering in the cloud. The key criteria for me is identicality, which means me as a CIO, CTO, if I build something in the cloud or if I build something on-premise, I have a very high identicality between the stacks and I can move data and code assets as I need it between the different on-premise and cloud offerings. And that's what makes Oracle truly unique stand out right now. Great points, Holger. George, uh, over to you regarding Snowflake. Any key points you want to bring up? I think Snowflake is actually interesting, right? I think that that when you look at the, the data warehousing market over the years, there have always been new startups who come in, focus on data warehousing databases, and and bring some some level of innovation into the into the data warehouse market. Um, you know, Snowflake's been very focused on on ease of use. They they were out before autonomous databases. We believe the autonomous database is every bit as simple and easy to use. Um, Snowflake's been focused on kind of leveraging the cloud architecture for scalability. And with autonomous database with auto scaling, we provide those similar type of capabilities. I, I think that if you look back, the struggle that every sort of data warehouse vendor has, and, and there've been many of them, I mean, it's just, I don't know, you know, you have whatever you had, Netiza and Data Allegro and Greenplum, and yeah, you could just keep going back and just, just name them. Um, the, the real struggle is, is that most of these vendors sort of had some nice technology. They, they had a differentiator that they highlighted. Um, but then that differentiator at some point runs out of steam when it hits real requirements. Um, you know, if you look at Snowflake, for example, um, you know, just kind of basic functionality, we have an Oracle. Um, primary key constraints and, and referential, you know, ensuring data integrity. Snowflake doesn't have enforced unique constraints. Um, you know, these are the, the kinds of things that you run into. The ability to do real-time trickle feeds into your data warehouse. A lot of our really large uh, autonomous data warehouse customers today use a technology called Golden Gate to stream data in near real-time into the data warehouse. How do you do that with a database that was kind of architected primarily for insert only databases? So I think the the you know the the history has shown us that real applications with lots of concurrent users with complex workloads with complex data loading schemes um, you really sort of trip up over time um, even the most sort of enthusiastic data warehouse startups. So I, I think that there's a certain level of database technology maturity that every data warehouse startup has suffered from. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the other big thing that we've seen that, that customers who have looked at Snowflake and that, ah, that's interesting. There's a huge cost in migrating to Snowflake. Well, I need to perhaps rework my ETL or my data integration process to push it into Snowflake. When you move to autonomous database, it's still an Oracle compatible database that so you would be able to keep your existing jobs, um, APIs, and how you coded it from your on-premise systems and move that into autonomous database. There may be ways you can optimize it and make it better, but you're going to be able to move much more quickly uh, with lower risk and at a lower cost to autonomous database. 
which leads us ultimately to the reason of this, right? I mean, well, running enterprises meaning looking at the information and then doing action, right? So insight to action is the holy grail which has escaped enterprise automation since forever. The need of faster movement, more agility for enterprise, enterprise acceleration. And we can't do it in a machine learning world where you have to bring these things together where my analytics and KPIs, which trigger a certain thing, need to in an autonomous or self-driving way do good and right things in my enterprise applications because you need to move fast. When we're so much at the cusp of insight to action becoming real, it's very hard to do that again with separate best of breed applications. Okay, gentlemen, thank you for your comments. And thank you for our viewers for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Okay. Thank you, Steve.